and thanks for tuning in. I am Greta Anderson of Dr. Greta Golf. So glad you're with us today. Today we are going to focus on your ultimate guide to great practice. That's really what we really want to do because as a golf teaching professional, I run into so many clients and people in general who um, become kind of frustrated. They feel like they're they're taking lessons, they're doing all these things, but they're just not seeing the results on course and in their score. And so what I often um, begin to ask them is that, tell me a little bit about your practice habits. And what I find is there really aren't habits. Practice is treated a little bit more happenstance than it, than it should be. And as a result, we get kind of happenstance out on the course. So today we're going to focus in on help you get ready for some great practice. So before we get started, if you would be so kind as to subscribe, hit the subscribe button right below if you haven't had a chance to do that, or and or hit the like button. I know you're going to like what we're talking about here, but we just want you to be an active member of our community here. So thanks in advance for doing that. So your ultimate driving range practice plan. Well, first of all, you've got to have a structured plan. And so there are really three things today that we're going to cover on rather briefly, but they are important. So the first one is the one that may surprise you at how basic it sounds, but it's the most important. Number one, you got to have a plan. Do you go into any other areas of your life um, where you're expecting success without a plan? I mean, sometimes it works out, but generally speaking, you have to have a plan. Most of us don't have the luxury of having 10, 20, 30, 40, however many hours, unlimited hours per week to practice. So we have to be very mindful of how we use the time that we do have and we are able to devote to our practice. So the important thing is to, when you're heading out to practice or planning your week or, or your day, know how much time you have to practice. Whatever that is, maybe it's 30 minutes, maybe it's 60 minutes, maybe it's 90 minutes, whatever it is, you have to know how much you have so that you can divide it up accordingly and consistent, consistent with the plan that makes sense for you and where you are right now in your game. So have a plan, create a plan. Hey, there's nothing wrong with taking notes, having a notebook, a journal of sorts for your golf game and your development, but have a plan. That's the big number one. The big number two in creating a smart and great structured practice plan for your golf game is this. Know and identify your goals. A lot of us know, yes, I certainly want to be a better golfer. I want to improve on some things. But exactly what is your goal? What are your goals at this present time? Whether that goal is to break 110, break 100, break 80, become a scratch golfer, get your first birdie, get your first double bogey, whatever it is, honor and respect your goals because they're your goals, but you have to know them. And specific goal setting in golf is just as important as it is in many other things in your life. Again, as a teaching pro, what I find is that this is something that a lot of players neglect, yet they wonder why they aren't realizing the results they want to. So know your goals, take some time to set down and address them. Think within yourself. You don't have to share them with anybody if you choose not to, but know your goals and then you can create a practice plan that makes sense and is consistent with those goals. So that third part of our structured practice plan is a biggie, but I find that a lot of people are a little timid about doing this one. I mean, after all, most of us don't play golf for a living. It's something that we do for fun. It's a social activity. So we're a little hesitant or even reticent to go out to our practice facility with focus. Now, when I say going in with purpose and focus, it doesn't mean that we have to be antisocial and not speak to people. But what we do need to remember is that we have a finite amount of time to come out and practice, right? So we've got to respect and honor that. If I'm squeezing in a 90 minute practice session on the way to my daughter's soccer practice, then I need to know that I've got about 90 minutes to make this work and stay focused and with my eye on the prize because ultimately my whole purpose for doing this is to improve. So it's not, again, it's not that they don't wanna be antisocial and enjoy the experience, 
but know you're here for a specific purpose rather than just kind of hanging around and bouncing out balls and, and uh, chatting up half of your time that you had devoted to your practice. Now in our next video on this topic, we're going to talk about some very specific things that you can do to help you maintain and really refine your focus so that you can get the maximum value out of your practice time. But in the meantime, let me know what are your golf goals? Do you have them? Have you set them? Are you in the process of, of uh, setting them? Let me know in the comment section below. And I look forward to uh, hearing all about what you're, what, you're, what you're aiming to do with your golf game. It's always exciting to have goals and to reach and grow toward them. So in the meantime, again, I thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you again soon. In the meantime, bye-bye.